G'day all, Elvin Pahl here from Adventuring Powers. You know, Western Australia is a massive state. It's true what true blue Aussie legend John Williamson said. There's nearly half Australia over there in WA and with that comes a variety of terrain, weather and fishing. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys four amazing fishing spots that we found in WA along with some campgrounds nearby so you can make the most of it. Let's start off in the south of the state. Rarely does a place live up to its name quite like the Salmon Holes in Tom Durup National Park near Albany. Alright guys, we're here exploring Tom Durup National Park at a place called the Salmon Holes. We came here just to try and catch some salmon because we heard in the grapevine they are biting. Do you reckon we caught any salmon? Well, if you can't tell by the smile on my face, why don't you check out the next little bit of video and find out, eh? See you on the other side. Oh, you can go wild. Uh, look in my bucket. Nah. We heard about this place from our friends and the tackle shop in Albany and it certainly did live up to its name and reputation as one of the top places in Australia to fish for the Australian salmon or Arafis trotter. There is a nice big car park there with plenty of space for parking and you'll need it because this place gets chockers shoulder to shoulder on the beach with locals and tourists all keen to get their piece of the action. We made our way from the car park and saw the beautiful picturesque beach and before we even made it down to the beach we were watching plenty of other fish eyes pulling up monster Australian salmon and not long after finding our own patch of the beach we had rods in the water and it didn't take long and we had three huge Australian salmon flapping on the beach all right here we go All right, Woo. look at that guy, our first salmon, and of course Ashley's the one who caught it. What a massive one too! <laughs> All along the beach and up on the rock walls there was people pulling in these monster salmons one after the other. Some people had bags full of them but we were happy with keeping three because we weren't sure how we are going to go eating them all. And the fish we caught were all over 80 centimeters. Okay, give daddy space! <laughs> Come back Jaden. Now this was actually the first time that we had caught Australian salmon, so the first time for us eating it too. And uh, we found that eating them fresh, they were beautiful, but after they've been frozen, they weren't as good. But even then, we kept three salmon that we caught and we did end up finishing them all. Now, as far as accommodation goes, there is plenty to choose from. There is some cheap um, beachside camping and stuff nearby, but we actually based ourselves at the Big Four Middleton Beach, which was an awesome little caravan park, really good playgrounds and swimming pools for the kids and for the whole family, and loads of nice barbecue areas. Now guys, before we move on to the next spot, if you could just do me a favor and hit that like button. I'm just trying to do an experiment and see if, if you guys hit that like button, if our videos get more views and get spread out to more people. So if you could please just smack that like button for me. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving along the coast, we're getting to the western side now. In fact, we're getting to the most western point of mainland Australia, and that is Steep Point and Dirk Hartog Island. And this one is about as rugged as it gets out here. To get to Steep Point, which is the westernmost point of mainland Australia, it is a rough and rugged track, but it's definitely worth it, because when you get there, you have this beautiful campsite right on the beach, on the shelter side of Steep Point, and here we set up and we caught just brim and whiting and oh my god so many big brim right off the beach within within just 10 meters walk from our campground how's that for a monster of a brim Lala. <laughs> that's a monster that's a bloody good brim that's uh probably my pv I think so. all right fish for dinner hey how's that <laughs> Woo! steep point baby oh <laughs> And that was just a steep point. We caught the ferry over to Dirk Hartog Island and we had the time of our lives. It was an amazing spot. The natural beauty, the history and the fishing was unreal. Oh my god guys. Everywhere we went fishing we caught a monster brim, huge whiting, flathead, heaps of heaps of fish and the kids had a really good time fishing here because it was a matter of chucking it out and wanting in a fish. In fact Jaden managed to outfish all of us. Right guys so we are here at Withnoor Point checking it out. Doing a bit of fishing, caught this guy here, 43 centimeter brim. That's my personal best. Before that, it was 42, so I'm stoked as. Little boy here, he's happy we got a big fish for dinner. Hey, happy? <laughs> That'll do. 
Now, like I said, anywhere we go on Dirk Hardock Island, we manage to catch fish, but the place where we had the most success is actually right where the barge drops you off. Ooh, fishing no! Now most of the island is national park and there's camping allowed in certain areas but we chose to stay at the uh, at the homestead where they have a bar <laughs> they have toilet flushing toilets and hot showers and uh, did I mention they have a bar and it is actually the only place on the island where are allowed campfires Okay, so time for number three, and we're moving along the coast again into the Pilbara. And here we stayed at 40 mile beach or Gnoria Point. And now we're getting into the top end with warmer weather, with more mangroves around. So here we have the choice of going into the mangroves, trying to get some crabs and some mangrove species, or we'll drive along the beach, and that's what we did. We actually did both. Guys. We're doing a tiri tiri walk, which is a Fijian for mangroves, and uh, we're looks getting some rubbish and lines off the trees, and found this guy here. Wow, just the back shell of a big mud crab. I imagine, imagine the whole crab. That's just the shell on it. People just eat the meat. Well, I don't know what they've done to it, but that's that's all we found of it. If we can find a whole one, that'll be mint, hey. But we didn't have any luck in the mangroves with the mud crab, so we hit the beach, driving down up to a nice spot and we had a go at the fishing and once again the boys actually did better than us and they caught a few good whiting. Yo guys we did all right four little whiting I think Jaden caught like three of them I caught one and yeah so stay tuned for a cook up. But really the camping here is really awesome it's cheap there's loads of camping here available we were lucky enough and we camped in like a secondary camping area there was only space for maybe like 10 caravans and we had a pretty nice spread out area right close to the beach we could walk straight from our caravan to the beach like 100 meters not even that and like i said you can even drive down the beach and find a spot of your own okay guys moving along again to number four and this is in the kimberley we are heading up the dampier peninsula at a place called banana wells it's about halfway up from broome up the dampier peninsula now Banana Wells is actually a campground and it is situated in like a semi bush setting. They have their camp kitchens and toilets and showers and they've even got a little dunk pool in the back which is definitely refreshing after the hot days we had up in the Kimberley. And they've got a few animals running around including pigs and donkeys out in the back and it's only a short drive to take it out to this beautiful beach and the fishing there was awesome. We hooked up to a barra, we didn't quite land it. We caught a few whiting and a few other species and we got lucky and caught a couple of mud crabs. But of course there's plenty more great camping and fishing spots to find out there in WA. But we hope that these four will give you a good start and a great taste for what's to come. Tight lines and I'll catch you in the next one.